This is Power to Excel with Dr. Sule Emanuel. For what you do, for what you mean to us, thank you. Thank you for the consistency of your ways and your love. Thank you for your commitment to us that we see every day. Thank you for your word that keeps gaining root in our lives. Thank you for your hand on our life that never fails. We appreciate you, dear Lord, from the depth of our heart. We ask that this day you rule in the midst of your people yet again. We open every part of our lives for the exploits of your grace. May we not return the same way we came. But for those who are here and those who are watching from every location, we ask you reach out to us in your own special way. Thank you, precious Father, for answers to prayers. In Jesus' matchless name we have prayed. Can God's people say a living amen? Give Jesus a mighty hand, everybody. Hallelujah. Take your seat for a while. Amen. Oh, sorry, stand. Get your Bibles, please. Let's read God's word together. Yeah. Lord, you are so good. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Lord, you are kind. Lord, you are wonderful, my Lord. You are excellent. Lord, you are so good. Lord, you are kind. Lord, you are excellent, my Lord. Excellent is your name, excellent is your power, Lord, you are my Lord, you are. Excellent is your name, excellent is your power, Lord, you are wonderful, my Lord. We say excellent, excellent is your name, excellent is your power, Lord, you are wonderful, my Lord, excellent is your name, excellent is your power, you are wonderful, we call you excellent. Excellent is your power. You are wonderful. You are excellent. Excellent is your name. Excellent is your power. Excellent is your power. We call you wonderful. Lord, you are wonderful. My God, you are excellent. is your Excellent is your name. Excellent is your power. Lord, you are wonderful. My God, you are excellent. My God, you are excellent. Excellent is your name. Excellent is your power. Lord, you are wonderful. My God, you are excellent. Excellent is your name. Excellent is your power. Lord, you are wonderful. My God, you are excellent. Excellent is your name. Excellent is your power. Lord, you are wonderful. My God, you are excellent. Excellent is your name. Excellent is your power. Lord, you are wonderful. My God, you are Excellent is your name. Excellent is your name. Excellent is your power. Lord, you are wonderful. 
wonderful, my God, you are excellent. Excellent is your name. Excellent is your power. Oh, you are wonderful, my God, you are excellent. Excellent is your name. Excellent is your power. Oh, you are wonderful. My God, you are excellent. is your name. Excellent is your power. Oh, you are wonderful. My God, you are excellent. Excellent is your name. Excellent is your power. Lord, you are wonderful. My God, you are excellent. Excellent is your name. Excellent is your power. Lord, you are wonderful. My God, you are excellent. Excellent is your name. Excellent is your power.
Excellent is your name. Excellent are your works. Never making a mistake. Never coming late. Always on time. Proving yourself daily in our lives. Excellent is your power. Thank you, precious Lord. Thank you, precious Lord. In the name of Jesus, we have worshiped. Get your Bibles quickly. I love the, the Passion Bible translation of Matthew eleven twenty eight. I'll come to the Amplified. And also we'll look at Luke 4, 18. We'll see how to do this greatly by the grace of God so we can get on our events. Okay. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Please, could you read from the screen, please? Please, everybody, so we can have one language. I'll look at 28 to 30. At the count of three, now let's read together. One, two, three, go. We look at the next verse. Verse thirty. This is Jesus talking here. Now, whoever said Christianity is boring does not know anything. It's easy. Now it says, Are you weary? Are you tired? Carry any heavy burden. Come to me. I'll refresh you. For I am your oasis. Simply join your life with mine. Learn my ways. And you will discover it's not hard. 
you will discover I am gentle, I am humble, I am easy to please, I'm easy to please because my grace is available to help you walk with me. You don't walk with me by just your decision, your will, your intellect. It's by my grace, my grace. For in him we live, we move, and have our being. Are we together here? Mm. He said, you will find refreshment and rest in me. For all that I require of you will be pleasant and easy to bear. Now you see, we have been, this is a very basic information. We have been saved to follow him. That's all. That's what we've been saved to walk with him. That's all. He said, you will discover all I require of you is easy to bear. We've been saved to enjoy a walk with him. We've been saved just to follow him. Now follow me and I will make you. Follow me. The making is not in your hand. The following is with you. The making is with him. The molding is with him. Your becoming is with him. Are you getting it now? But our responsibility is to follow him. All right, now let's look at Luke 4, 18. Give me the amplified on this. Give me the amplified on this, please. Now, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, the Messiah, because He has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. So, what the poor needs is good news. And listen now, we're talking of the poor in all areas now poor financially, poor in health, poor in every dimension. What the poor needs is good news. Mm. Not money, good news. The way out. The good news is the way out. The good news is the way up. Hmm. He has sent me to announce release. He has sent me to announce release, pardon, forgiveness to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind. Now, look at the next part. This is my emphasis now. To set free those who are oppressed. Who are the oppressed? The downtrodden, the bruised, and those who have been crushed by agony. Now, we look at the subject this morning being made whole or be made whole thank you so i don't change it there be made whole part one please sit now thank you ah amen thank you father now you see <clears throat> the fact here is this i i deeply care about everyone under my pastoring i do i do i don't just want you to have money you should be well uh, there's a difference between having money and being well uh, it's not just enough for you to get married you should be well um, it's not just enough for you to have money you should be well there is a difference there's a difference there are many people who are married but are not well there are many who have money and they are not well many today who are switching jobs and having pleasant jobs but they are not well so my desire by the grace of God and that's why I preach the way I preach I teach the way I teach you should be well now I should be pastoring happy people who are enjoying Jesus daily not just people who are bottling a pain now this is the passion that drove me to the place of prayer and study hence I'm teaching on this today uh, because I see again and again that people who are uh, looking all smiley, looking all amazing, all handsome, beautiful, uh, having cars, having houses, uh, switching jobs, but are not well. I'm not well. And Jesus didn't just say, I came so you have money, you have got a car. He, he spoke about those who are crushed. They are those who are broken. They are those who are in short on the inside. Now, as, please, let's follow me patiently on this. I'll see how to maximize the time that I have. This is going to be heavy. Um, I'm doing this for three sessions. This morning session, next week, first service, and second service. Um, we'll see how to maximize this anyway. <clears throat> now, now, one of the most important truths that we all have got to accept as a people is that while we all are looking up to Jesus for a better life, our problems are not the same. Uh, what, what makes us cry is not the same. And that's why you must not, and this is very important, you must not look at what makes another person cry and, uh, and feel irritated because uh, where they have a defeat, you may have victory. And where you have victory, they may have a defeat. Are you, are you getting me at all here? So you look at someone who's, you say this person is so obsessed about getting married. No problem. No problem. That person is enjoying good health. You are married, but you don't have health. 
are, are you getting me at all here? So while we all, while our faces are different, our faces are unique as it were, our challenges are also unique. So there are those who have financial challenges, there are those who have emotional challenges, some are having psychological challenges, some have family challenges. Uh, as individuals, it's important we understand that our issues um, are different and our needs are different. What makes us cry is unique. What makes us cry is different. Uh, you can look at someone and be impatient with how they express themselves and say, why is he crying about this little thing? It's little to you, it's big to them. What is big to you may be little to them. So this teaches you the discipline of being considerate of people. Being understanding of people. So you don't relate with people's pain as though you were superhuman. You don't relate to people's pain as though you are up in every area of life. Listen, I faced this, I remember a couple of years ago, back in the university. We were doing some things for the Lord. And there was a young man who was more into outreaches in the university. More into outreaches. He would go out and he was such, he's doing amazing work. And I think he's somewhere in Kenya, doing great work as an apostle, doing great well. Uh, and he would go about preaching and he had some squads. Is this, okay, he, has a, he had a squad, right? A group is squad, right? He had a squad who would always be with him. You know, this student daddy now, he had people who were always around him, you know, go with him from place to place. Some of you can relate to what I'm talking about. And in university, those men who are evangelical, they have some, a child has a child, you know. So, anyway, okay, so now this gentleman had a squad who followed him from place to place. So I remember one of those days, one of the ladies who were, who was part of his squad just had a heartbreak so when he needed all of them to come to the field there was a field where they pray so they reported to him and said ah, she can't come home they have I've given her something and I remember when he came to me we're just we're talking I mean just comparing notes and he said ah, what is wrong with this people oh, come on heartbreak hey 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 are you getting me now? He said, come on. Now, to be honest with you, I am speaking now like this because maturity has come. Are you getting me now? <laughs> I said, come, come on. These people are so carnal. Eh? Carnal. How do you pray when your heart is divided? Are you getting me at all here? Now, now why am I saying this now? Being considerate of people's pain. So you don't look at someone and say, ah, everything oh, is pressed about money, money, money. Hey, 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 hey. There are people who, the responsibilities on them don't make them think straight. Someone is looking at you, he's seeing his father. <laughs> are you getting me now? Because bills have to be paid. So that's why in short, I don't, I'm not worried when everybody does not smile. Or you don't know what making somebody maintain a straight face. Are you getting me at all here? So our pains are different. What makes us cry, what makes us bleed are different. So it's important. So it is absolutely wrong um, because that's part of what I'm doing in this series to also help us as Christians to be, don't kill that human side. Eh? Now Jesus didn't say I'm coming to take, he said occupy till I come, enjoy life. So the way some of us live, say, ah, how can somebody who is supposed to be thinking of heaven, eh, see, the one who is coming says you should stay. You that he says you should stay, you say you are going. Would there not be a problem there? He said, occupy till I come. I will be the one to say when it's time. And you may very well occupy well, occupy well. There has to be a decision to occupy well. Because it's how you live that shows you are not occupying. Are you getting me at all? There's how you live that shows you are not occupying at all. So it's important not to dismiss the pain of people. It's extremely important because our challenges are different. It's extremely important. So you will not be fair as a Christian, as a human being. I think that's the first part. You will not be fair as a human being to criticize others for struggling with what you think you have overcome. Let him that thinketh he stand, take heed lest he falls. All right, so now scripture shows us that Jesus was quite clear. Jesus was quite clear about his assignment, quite clear. He was clear about the areas he wants to give us victory. Now look at Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28. And let me read it again. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30. He said, are you weary? Are you tired? Some of us are tired. Some of us are tired. You've been fighting for years. You've been battling for years. You are tired. You're tired. 
But sometimes you just have to keep being strong. Because those around you, the kids, the wife, the husband, they, they dare not see that you look tired. Uh, because when you are tired, there's a way you talk. When you're tired, there are things you would say. And those around you, not knowing how long you've been tired, will think that what you are saying is about them. Are you getting me at all here? He said, are you weary? Carrying a heavy burden. Hey, many people looking at me here. What you are carrying is older than you. Older than you. Now, individual carrying a family burden. Heavy burden. Heavy responsibility. Now, Jesus says, come to me. I'll refresh you. Not just come to church. Come to me. Many are in church, but not in Christ. Many are inside church and still carrying the, the load. When Jesus said, drop it, casting your cares on him. Many are in church and still carrying it. He said, come to me. I will refresh you for I am your oasis. Simply, this is all you have to do. Join your life with mine. I'm going to bring all of this together before we're done. Um, next week, um, third service, second service, sorry. He said, learn my ways and discover that I am gentle. Now, have a look at all of this. Let us bring flesh to this. Now, hurt, disappointment, betrayals, um, they have the possibility of leaving, you know, rejection, abandonment, uh, molestation, abuse, whatever it is, they have the tendency of leaving permanent scars in people. But it does not have to be that way. That's not the will of God for you. But these issues, as we give it a human face, they've got a possibility to um, to leave a permanent scars on, on people's lives. You know, it can be a divorce. There are people who go through a divorce. Maybe you're hearing me right now. Your life has never been the same since after a divorce. Uh, there are people who go through devastating heartbreaks. I mean, devastating. There is heartbreak. And there is heartbreak. Are, are you getting me at all here? You know, devastating heartbreak. And that shatters and destroys a person's whole life. You know, betrayals. When you are betrayed even by family, betrayed even by loved ones, betrayed even by those that you helped, it has the possibility of leaving a permanent scar on your life. You know, abandonment, rejection, as it were, ill treatment. These things have the possibility. It could be an abuse. It could be a rape. It could be molestation. It could even be the absence of a mother, absence of a father, uh, absence of a husband. Uh, because it can be possible that you are seeing your husband but he's absent you are seeing your wife but she's absent it can be all of that they have the possibility because if God does not help you uh, the first thing you are quick to think is that you are the problem you are the problem because that's one thing that uh, uh, a devastating experience leaves with people making you feel that you are are the problem you are the reason it happened uh, there is something about you and there are people who carry this for the rest of their life they see life like this they talk like this they respond to seasons just like that uh, so it is true that certain experiences please follow me patiently certain experiences will not leave us the same certain experiences that we've been exposed to will not leave us the same it's extremely important that we understand it but god wants us to be whole god wants us to be whole now, the gospel of Jesus brings healing. The true gospel of Jesus brings healing. Now, healing in every facet of life. Healing in every area. The true gospel, it is not possible to be opened to the gospel of Jesus and not be moving in healing. Accelerating in healing. It is not possible to be opened. Where there's a problem is that many times people are close to the gospel. People just get present around where the gospel is preached because religiously they have to be there. You will feel guilty not being in church on Sunday. Not that you are here to receive a word from God, but it would not be right to be on your bed on a Sunday morning. As someone watching right now, not that it, it's something they are looking forward to, but it will not be right. It will not be right. It will feel somehow if they are not connected to a service on a Sunday morning but when you open yourself to the gospel the gospel has the possibility of bringing healing the true gospel of Jesus healing healing from health challenges healing in our soul and that's the call we're looking at in this series healing in the soul healing in our minds healing that will bring about the right perspective Healing that will bring about the right perspective. Healing that brings about alignment with God. Healing that does not empower the devil to control your focus. Healing. Healing. Healing that does not empower the devil to control your destiny. 
Healing that does not empower the devil to crush the potentials of a person. Uh, because when, when certain persons are sick in certain dimensions, uh, whatever it is, maritally, financially, if you are sick in certain dimensions, it affects your potentials. It affects what you can do. It affects what you become. So God wants us healed. Now, now as we look at, as I began to meditate on this the last couple of days, as we look at the effects of being broken and being hurt in the soul, one example that comes to mind, strangely so, is the Israelites in Egypt. One example that comes to mind, uh, many of us may not have seen it, but follow me patiently, you get it now. Most of the Israelites in Egypt were born in Egypt. Uh, they were exposed to terror from infancy. Uh, they were treated wrongly from, from infancy. Now, most of the people, the children of God, the Israelites in Egypt were broken people. These were broken people who, uh, many of them, while God was moving them from Egypt to Israel, they never healed. They never healed. They never healed. So it was impossible. Please listen now. You relate with this now. So it was impossible for them to enter their promised land. Because of what they had been through, many never believed what God promised them. They spoke against God. They spoke against the promises. They dishonored and mistreated their leader. And many even preferred to return back to their oppressors. <laughs> many prefer to return back uh, they believe and this is another part they believe they were never good enough for what God promised them hey, we are not able we saw ourselves like grasshoppers in their eyes uh, so they believe they were not good enough uh, for what God promised them they forgot all the victories that God had given them now this is the problem yes the oppressor was bad yes the oppressor was evil Yes, the oppressor looked powerful, but they forgot how many times God had delivered them out of the hand of the oppressor. Yes, the, opp the oppressor abused them. The oppressor took valuable things out of their hands, their self-worth. Because one of the things that a slave master does is to take away self-worth. The oppressor took away their self-worth. The oppressor took away the, a sense of dignity, a sense of pride. Now, you can relate with this now. This is an abuser. Are you getting it now? What Pharaoh did was to abuse them. Now, their reaction and the things they were saying was what and the way many respond to abuse. Are you with me at all here? Uh, so these guys, they never got value for their imputes. When they put in things, value didn't come back. A Pharaoh will make them feel, and the Egyptians who were their tax and slave masters, will make them feel, you didn't do well. Uh, so when they labored and put in so much, they never got a commensurate value. And this was the life that they kept on living. But despite all that they faced in the hand of a Pharaoh, God was always there to prove himself. But this is the challenge. Every feeling of brokenness, Every feeling of injury in the soul results in certain behaviors. Every feeling. So what we see, the Israelites displayed, how they talk down on their leader, how they talk down on God. This happens in our real, real world and real life. How they talk down on the man God sent to help them was not really because they don't like the promised land. It was the expression of broken people. It was the reaction of people who have been abused. Their mind has been abused. A slave master first captures your mind before they capture your hand. They capture your mind. They capture your mind. They enslave your mind. And this is what the Israelites went through. Now, another example that comes to mind. Another example that comes to mind would be Mephibosheth. Let's talk about him for a while. Mephibosheth. Now, when you look at God's word in 2 Samuel chapter 4, verse 4, you discover that Mephibosheth, uh, he was born in the palace. Mephibosheth was born in the palace. As a matter of fact, he had seen five years in the palace. He had been exposed to royal living, royalty, five years. Being taken care of, being served, being treated well, and being adored. He had been exposed to all of these. And it so did happen that five years into his birth, something happened in the palace. Uh, daddy was dead. 
granddad was the Saul and Mephibosheth, if you must know, is the grandson of Saul, the son of Jonathan. As a matter of fact, if Saul, if you follow the natural order, if Saul was dead, Jonathan should be on the chair. And now Jonathan was dead, Mephibosheth should be on the chair. Okay, follow me patiently on this. Now, uh, Mephibosheth, daddy was dead, and a, a servant carried him, a, a nurse as it were, one who had been assigned to take care of him, one who had been assigned to nurture him, and the nurse carried him because of the chaos and everything happened in the palace, carrying him for safety, carrying him to a place of hiding. While the nurse was carrying him, the nurse dropped him on the floor. This happens every time. Where people who are supposed to carry you drop you on the floor. People who are supposed to nurture you, abandon you midway. People are supposed to be there for you all of a sudden, turn their back on you. And while the nurse, and this is interesting, we never saw that the nurse picked him up. The Bible said then he fell off the hand of the nurse and we never knew what the name of the nurse is. Many of us looking at me today, what you are going through is because you were dropped at some point in time. The people you trusted, the people that were, you know, they, 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 they put your life in their hands, somehow abused you, somehow they dropped you and what you are going through is the effect of a drop. How you are talking, how you are behaving, how you are dreaming, your feeling of self-worth self or the absence of it is because you were dropped at some point in time. My feeble chef. But, but, but that's not why I want to emphasize on. I take you to Second Samuel chapter 9, verse 1. Now David said, is there anyone that is left in the house of Saul, of Jonathan. I want to show him kindness. Uh, that's my emphasis. Is there anyone left in the house of, of Jonathan, my friend? I, I want to show him kindness. But, but now, it, it, it's okay to look at that part and just be uh, captivated by that. But here's the, the, the emphasis here. Jonathan was now staying in a place called Lodibar. Even the name sounds low. Low. He was now staying in a place called Lodibar. And when David sent for him, these were the words of Jonathan. He said, who am I? That you pick interest on me, a dead dog. Now, you see what, what happens now? When you were dropped, it changes your language. When you've been abused, broken, it changes how you see yourself. Now, this was the guy who was raised in the palace. How did he become a dead dog. Along the way, people may have drummed this into him. He may just be re-echoing what he has been told for a long time. He may just be, now, your dad is dead. Your granddad is dead. You've got no hope. There are people who remind you of what you have lost. They remind you of how little you are. Remind you of how much of a nobody you are without them. Have you been there when somebody told you, without me, you won't rise. Without me, you won't do anything. It is, it is, it is what Mephibosheth must have gone through. Now he was in Lodiba. A feeling of emptiness. A feeling of uselessness. Now he came to his helper. Thank God for a David. They are helpers you come before. From the moment you describe yourself as a dead dog, they close the door. Because no helper wants to have a dead dog around him. No helper wants to have someone who depresses an atmosphere. But thank God for helpers like David. It is my prayer for everyone under the sound of my voice. May God send you determined helpers. May God send you resolute helpers. People who will not give up on you. People who will not give up halfway. May God send you good helpers. Determined helpers. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let your amen be the loudest. Sit for a while. Now, pain never leaves people the same way. Pain never, never, never. Hurting experiences never leave people the same way. It changes for many how they define themselves. Prince Mephibosheth. Prince. Now, whether daddy was dead or not, sir, this is still a prince. Oh, the royal blood is in him. Whether daddy was dead or not, 
He's still a, now, now, he was describing himself. What he has been through, what people have said about him and to him has changed how he defined himself. Maybe you're looking at me right now, hearing me right now. How you define yourself has changed because of things you've been through. What people told you. Maybe someone told you, if I withdraw my help from you, let's see how far you can go. So you've been around certain people, compromising just to keep enjoying help. You've been taking all kinds of nonsense just to keep enjoying handout. At the queen of name of Jesus, may God send you good helpers, good helpers. May God send you good helpers. I decree that through this encounter, a change fixes that condition. May God send you good helpers. May Jehovah send you good helpers. May the Lord send you good helpers. Can I get your Lord? Amen. Mm, take your seat for a while. The people who take all kinds of things, insults and abuses. Many who compromise, you know, is not right, but you have to do it just to keep enjoying some sort of help. May the Lord make you whole from this encounter. You know what wholeness does? Allow me to use that word again. It makes you reject nonsense. If I perish, I perish. Are we together? So many of us have been through so much. You dress and look all nice, but inside, like something is eating you up slowly. You are eating food, it's not showing on the body because you are not well. Someone talk about not being well, it's not having uh, malaria, fever, no, no self. <laughs> there are people with money in the pocket, money in the bank, but they are not well. Someone married for five years. But still carrying the injury of 15 years ago. Married for 20 years. And the man is all irritated. The woman irritated from time to time. And sometimes we want to believe maybe it's a spirit wife. The, the way this man is baby is a spirit wife. The way this woman is so angry every time is a spirit husband. And many times we blame lack of money. Say, this is my career. Maybe if I do it, I get more money. Things will be fine. But meanwhile, at the root of all the expression, is an injury inside that has not been healed. An injury inside. An injury inside. Mm. You see, I have every confidence. It's not unlikely. Uh, maybe some of you, that's why you attended first service. It's not unlikely that as we are here now, there are many of us, and even those who are watching, who are hurting deeply. Every day you wake up, you wake up with that thought. You wake up with that pain. You wake up with that imagination. But, but this is something I also discovered. Most times, it is broken people that abuse other people. Now you see, now, now understanding that is the beginning of your healing. It is broken people, controlling, negatively controlling people. People with no, no there's, there's a wrong sense of value and there's no sense of value. People with no sense of value that abuse people. That is extremely important because if you fail to understand this, if you fail to accept it, you will keep feeling you are the one damaged. You will keep carrying this from place to place. You will keep feeling you are the one that has a problem. Now, you see, one of the, the foundation steps of recovery is you admitting, I am not the problem. Now, be, say it long enough till you believe it and agree with it. I am not the problem. Because when you believe and assume you are the problem, you keep moving from, 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 from abuse to abuse. From molestation to molestation, from a wrong hand to a wrong hand, from an exploiter to an exploiter, because you believe you are the problem. So, since you believe you are the, the problem, how you choose is also affected. How you choose where to work, how you choose who to be with, how you choose who to trust, it is not possible to make the right choices with a twisted perspective. It's not possible. It's not possible. 
That's what you say. I, I pity for people. And allow me in case this touches. Listen, things I'm saying there, some of you will feel so connected to this. Because there are some things I preach at times, and I, I, I've got, gotten feedback. People feel, Pastor, this thing is he's talking to me. Now, that, that's message. That's word of God. You have to feel that this thing is about me. That's how you know this one God wanted me here. Now, you see, I am absolutely against it, sir. No matter how hungry for acceptance you are, single people, divorces, it is absolutely unwise to leave a relationship and enter another almost immediately. You are not healed. You will choose wrongly. Now, you've been with an abuser for six months, for one year, for two years. And all of a sudden, said, ah, after he left me, a week later, God just sent me a Prince Charming. How did you choose? Because your perspective is, is damaged. It has to be realigned again. Are you getting me at all? You choose wrongly. You see, and this is where I want to take, talk about being whole. Let me say this. Your wholeness, your completeness is not in the hand of any human being. When you are in a desperate need because you are feeling empty, you need a person. No, you have a problem. You don't need a person. You have a problem. Are you getting me at all here? You have a problem. You don't need a person. You have an issue. What is the issue? You don't yet have a feeling of wholeness. And the presence of a person in your life does not bring wholeness. Because if you don't feel whole, you bleed on innocent people. If you don't feel whole, you don't feel complete. Now, you see, God was so deliberate. He said, in the presence of the Lord, not presence of a man, in the presence of the Lord, there's a fullness of joy. You can have another woman, another man, and still be depressed, and still be empty. If Jesus has not occupied the space meant for him alone. Are we together? So, you know, it's something you've got to do. There are people who have, it, if it's a phobia, I think we should talk, let's be practical, at least for this morning session. There are people who have a phobia for being alone. I don't know if that's the right. You just can't be alone. You don't mind if you're with a devil, but you can't be alone. You can't be alone. Huh? For a while, sir, Adam was alone. No. For a while, he was alone with goat, dog. They were happy. Oh. Are you getting me at all? He was alone. And this is what affects you because you don't have a huge perspective. You don't have a whole perspective. So there, there's something in you cannot just be alone for a while. So you say, I don't know what is wrong. They keep abusing me from this. No, check well. You opened the door for abuses again and again. Are you with me? Can I get an amen? Is this helping somebody? Whew. So it, it's extremely important that we understand this now. now. Now, I believe also that the reason many people are broken, the reason many are broken, it's not really, not really, not only what we have been through, a major reason why many of us are broken at the point where we are injured in our soul is because many of us never really seek help. Many of us never really seek help. And many have not had the courage to speak because you don't want to be judged. You don't want to be condemned. You don't want to be labeled. So you are keeping the pain. You are keeping the issue, but you are sinking. So it's really not what you went through that's making you this. It's because you are not seeking help. You're not talking about it. And you're not really, and that's what God will help us to achieve between and the third session where you, you ability to talk to Jesus as your friend is that real as your friend is that real 
Now, that's what makes us different from the people of the world. We know this God. Ability to talk to him as your friend. That's why he said, he said, are you weary? Are you tired? Are you crushed by a tragedy? Talk to me. Talk to me. I will help you. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, as we bring this together now, a quick, now, who is a broken person? I, I think using that word again and again, I just need to give um, light on that, you know. Um, who, who is a broken person? Uh, so you have to understand, if, is this about me? Um, who, who is a broken person? Now, anyone, anyone, and, and please, brokenness is not gender sensitive. They are broken men. They are broken women. Pain is not gender sensitive. Because why? Every human being has got a heart. Every human being has got an emotion. Got an emotion, rather. So who is a broken person? Now, anyone who has been negatively affected by life and their sense of worth was affected. Anyone who has been negatively affected by life and their sense of worth was affected, their perspective was negatively affected, their worldview was negatively affected, and their direction was negatively affected. These are broken people. Now, when I say their world view was negatively affected, there are people who, because of what they've been through, how they see marriage is, has changed. Their world view on marriage. How they see pastors have changed. Some of you here now, I've pastored you for one year. You are still looking at me with suspicion. He's a good man, who, But the former church, that's how that pastor was. Are we together? Yeah. But you see, there are people I've pastored here for nine years. How long have I pastored you? Almost 11 years. This is who I am. You can't be fake for 11 years now. But, but Barry, you've been around me for how long? 10 years. Ah. Not be so I've been. <laughs> this is who I am. You can't be fake for 11 years. Ah, waiting now. It's not possible. You can only grow. <laughs> Whatever you are will grow with time. And that's it. But this is it. So, so, so for many of us, your worldview has changed. Do you know there are people who are in marriage? Five years of being married, they still look at their husband with suspicion. Now, five years after marriage, it's not the man. They had been through so much. Now, now when you find a man, who does not trust a woman? His wife. Oh. Say, no, 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 whether it's your wife or not, women are the same everywhere. Now, when you see that a man with a damaged word view, there are men who rather trust a friend outside than their wives. There are things that some men have, their wives don't know, their friends know. And they say, no, 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 women. No, the place of a woman is in the... Oh, you've heard that before. Now, it's not wisdom for a man to think that way. It's a sign of a broken word view. <laughs> these days, when women are presidents, these days, your own, you left her in the kitchen, your own. Another man released his wife to be president. Another man, America, the powerful, most powerful country in the world, the woman is the, the, the woman is vice president. And the man is a first, first service, a second man. <laughs> Who cares? Yes, sir. <laughs> no, 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 it's a damn, no, can I talk for a while? Yes, now, it's a damn made word view. When you as a young man, I, I can never spend a woman's money. Does the money say the gender that gave it? No, 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 no. Me for what? Spend a woman's money. You are not proud that you could create an atmosphere for the woman to make money. You should even say, if not for the peace I gave you, you won't be making this money. Oh. Are you getting my point now? Say, no, ma'am, for what? No, no, over my dead, but the man is dying secretly. Oh. Spend. Now, you see, 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 this thing called anointing, it can rest on any gender, sir. Don't die for nothing. Say, no, no, I may, I, my wife bought a car. I cannot drive that car. And the car you are driving is driving you. You are, you are, you, you are, I, I, are we together? It's of you to move car. Car is moving you. You, don't, you have no idea what you are doing with your life. It's a damned worldview. So when men start speaking in a certain way, you just know where it's coming from. 
You just know. The Bible says, and read your Bible, oh. If any man cannot provide for his house, huh? Did he say money? Don't, don't carry your, your, your mindset and interpret Bible wrongly. If any man cannot provide, he is worse than an infidel. Did you see money there? If you can't provide direction, and I know my servant Abraham he is able to lead this house after my fear. Are you getting me at all? God brought you together because there's, there's a lot of emptiness in you. You are empty in certain areas. So God brought somebody that can complement that part. But your arrogance has made you sustain that emptiness. You, you have kept it. No, 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 no. A woman should know her place. Your wife can't even speak where you are. But you go to a shop somewhere, one woman is controlling you. Where, where should I turn? Turn, 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 turn? Please sit for a while, guys. Are we together? Some of you hearing me? The, the person that pays you salary is a woman. Who, you come home and you're not doing something for you. Are we together? It's a damaged word for you. Don't say it as an African man. African man. Carry Africa to heaven now. Then when you get to heaven, they say, all oh, the Africans. Come here, you have your own distance. Are we together? Go when I hear people just, you just suffer for nothing. See, I told Pastor T before we got married, thank God God is blessing us and do what he's doing. I say, if it's you, that God brings the money first, you, hey, I will, I will cruise your car. Eh? I, with pride. It's my wife's car. If you are angry, hit the wall. Hit the wall. Is it your wife? This is my wife now. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. So, see, now, you see, single men here, because there are some single men not married. Now, they, they, they are so rooted in some demonic tra- now, They are not married yet, oh. They are rooted in some demonic tradition. Now, you are not married. Now, how can you get a right woman with this mindset? You're already single. No wife. And a lady, a single girl is speaking around you. You are irritated by their voice. Oh, I hear things and I see things. You are just irritated. No, no, no. Ah, men, men are talking. And a woman is... Ah! Now you see, for such a man, there is a limit to your rising. There is a... In fact, the acorn... Now, the problem is not foundation, no. The, the Egypt is inside you. Your Egypt is inside you. All right, so as I tend to bring this to a close, how do I become whole and stay whole? Are you getting something at all? How do I become whole and stay whole? Let's look at this quick and we get for others in the second service to come join us. Whew, there's so many things I'm skipping. We'll talk about it in the, the next week's service. Mm. The first that's very important, to experience wholeness, to, to be whole and to stay whole. Forgive yourself and those who hurt you. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. Now, every form of hurt involves two people. Two or more people, rather. Now, genuinely forgive those who hurt you. Forgive yourself. Now, listen. If you refuse to forgive them, you are prolonging the pain. Now, for every time, and this is important. Now, refuse to forgive actually means you are carrying your pain and your past anywhere you go into a marriage into a relationship you are can't forgive them now see how you make it better to forgive people if they knew better they would have behaved better if they knew better now that that, that it's a is a leveler if they knew this was just if this person knew better they would have behaved better it was foolishness that made them do this to me. Don't look at people's age and think they are wise. Some people grow up, they don't grow old. They just grow, rather they grow old, they don't grow up rather. It's a, it's a, it's a twist now. For some people, all they do every year is just at the age. They are not growing up, oh. they are growing old. It's a difference. Ability to create, this person, lack of wisdom. If they knew better, they'll do better. Let them go. Forgive yourself. You are not the problem. Abuse wants you to make you feel you are the problem. 
an exploitative person, a narcissist, wants you to feel you are the problem. They want to own your soul, own everything, make you the problem. You are the reason why this business is not going well. You are the reason the marriage is failing. You are the, they just want you to feel them. Forgive them. Otherwise, you carry your pain and your past everywhere you go. You don't need that. Genuinely. Genuinely. Now you see, now it's easy for me just to say that because you've heard this maybe once or twice. Forgive. Now you see, let me help us. An easy way to forgive. Pray about it. Hebrews 4 verse 16, he said, ask for grace that will help in, help in time of need. Now, time of need can be substituted for areas of need. Pray about it. Lord, this weight in my heart, take it away. Change how I see this thing that happened to me. Change how I define it. Talk to God about it. Remember? Philippians 4 verse 6. He said, don't worry about anything. Any, any, anything. He said, everything that worries you, talk to God about it. Talk to him about it. Talk to him about it. So forgive yourself. It's not your fault. What happened to you happened. Now, it's simple logic. You will not deliberately put yourself in a position to be hurt. Will you? No. So forgive yourself. It's not, you didn't call that people who have been in abusive situations, molestation, and they keep blaming themselves. It was my fault. It was my... Now, you would not deliberately in your right senses put yourself in a situation to be exploited. You are wiser now. You won't make the mistake again. Are you getting me at all now? Forgive yourself and forgive the people. And see, stop blaming you. Stop blaming you. Stop blaming you. Crying yourself every day. Worrying every day. It was me. It was my fault. It was my fault. Let that stop. Number two, very importantly. Number two. Now, reject every wrong identity. Consciously. Reject every wrong identity. That your past. Your past pain and people tried to force on you now reject every wrong identity that your past your pain and people tried to force on you and please be deliberate about this deliberately reject it now live opposite of what your pain wants you to live like live opposite don't bow to the command of the past reject the wrong identity I'm not a loser. I'm not a failure. I'm not the name that he called me, that she called me. Reject it. That is what your past wants you to believe. Israelites, your past wants you to believe you are a slave forever. Your past wants you to believe you can never be master forever. Your past wants you to believe that there's a limit. You will not rise. Now, reject every wrong identity, consciously so, in the place of prayer, Consciously, so I reject it. In the name of Jesus, I reject it. I reject it. Consciously. Until every part of your being believes it and agrees with it. Number three, very importantly. To be whole and to stay whole. Please, stay away from depressing atmosphere. Stay away, please, consciously. Con depressing atmosphere. When depressing thoughts come, do something about it. Because, I mean, as a human being... They are taught of what has happened. They are taught of where you're coming from. Please do something about it. Be in control. Be in control of your atmosphere. As the Lord helps you, notice a thought. Rebuke that thought in the name of Jesus. He said, resist the devil and his works. Resist the devil and his introductions. Resist the devil and what he tries to bring into your life. Resist the devil and he will flee. Stay away from the present thought. Don't accept the present atmosphere. Some people are depressing. You are around them, they remind you every time what you are trying to forget. Please help yourself stay away from depressing atmosphere. There are certain conversations that keep, they, they remind you of what you thought you, are, you, 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 you have healed from. Help yourself, please. Don't forget the goal, it is to be whole and to stay whole. Don't forget the goal. It is to be whole and to stay whole. Where your perspective is right. Your alignment with God is right. Your, your potentials are not under any form of satanic control. Who you want to become, how you see yourself, how you define life is not being controlled by some pain or some past. Praise the Lord. Number four, quickly now. I've eaten up into the second service. Number four. 
Now, remember always that there are still many good days ahead of you. Now, life is not a sprint. It is a journey. Remember that there are still many good days ahead of you. Life is a marathon. It's a marathon. You are not dying anytime soon. Hmm? There's still many good days out of you. Stop living like somebody who, you know, your best days are gone. Your best days. Now, remember, there are still many good days. With God, you will still become everything you wanted to be. You will still become. So there are still many good days ahead of you. Live with this consciousness. Life is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Calm down. Relax. With God, all things are possible. You are possible. Your dreams are possible. Your potential has become alive. So life is not a sprint. It's a marathon. You are here for a long time. You are not going anywhere until you are done. Are you getting me at all? Live with that consciousness. Because the way some of us live is as if, hey, who I would have been if not for what I went through. Are you dying tomorrow? If not for what I went through. By now, I knew I would have been. If not for what they did to me. If not for how they... No, relax. Life is a marathon. It's not a sprint. God is keeping you with, you know, with, with, you know for, for, for his glory. The Bible says with long life, with long life, with long life, will he satisfy me? Personalize it. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, number five. Whew. Is this helping anybody? Are you getting something at all? We should preach this in church. Oh. I can't keep telling you, be healed. Let your door be open. And, and your soul is injured. Even when the door opens, you look like somebody whose doors are closed. There's some people who tell you God is blessing them. You, you, you start doubting it. Are you getting me? Not because God is not blessing them. You, it's not showing. No matter how much they try. But because, listen, listen, listen. The real prosperity is the prosperity of the soul. If your soul is well, if your soul is fine, every other thing will take shape. It's from here. Where you are genuinely happy, genuinely hopeful, hopeful, it will happen for me. I will get there. God is not true with me. He is holding me by the hand. No matter what I've been through, I'm working with Jesus and I will get to my dream destination. Now, are you seeing that now? There's hope. Now, you say, just so you know. Now, The stats of people who die suicide is more as a result of the absence of hope than the absence of money. Are you getting me? Suicide is largely a product of the loss of hope, not the loss of money. So it would be wrong if we only focus on receive money receive healing and somebody's soul is empty remember i wish above all things that they prosper even as your soul number what please number five okay i'll give you number six cobra dagasayata paradash put what did you like there now what's that okay number five <laughs> number five don't allow what you went through change how you describe yourself. Don't allow, don't empower what you went through. De de you know, change how you define and how you describe yourself. You are not what they did to you. You are not what they called you. You did not deserve it. And this is not how you should be treated by others going forward. Maybe this is how they should be treating me. Maybe it's just me. You did not deserve it. It should not lower your expectations. It should not make you call yourself by a wrong name. No! Don't allow what you went through. Change how you define and describe yourself. Don't allow it. Maybe people just like Mephibosheth, they call you a dead dog. Reject it. It may not literally be a dead dog. It may be another name. Good for nothing bad luck, useless, worthless, burden. Don't allow what you went through 
change how you define yourself and that leads me to number six, number six number six very importantly consciously call yourself by a new name consciously do that on purpose do that on purpose do that on purpose that's one thing god started doing with children of israel but they were not sensitive god said to moses these people are my people what god was trying to do was to change what they called themselves they are not slaves consciously call yourself by a new name are you getting me now what god was doing deliberately these are my people israel is my firstborn what god was trying to do what, what he told moses he was trying to change how they saw themselves for 400 years or so they have been called slaves they've been called useless they've been called empty now god began a process he was trying to change how they call themselves how they define themselves you've got to do that for yourself no matter what the abuse is what the molestation is what the abandonment is what the rejection is, whatever it is consciously start calling yourself by a new name consciously 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 the name the lord has called you the name the lord has called you you are the blessed of the lord you are the light of the world you are the city set on the hill are you getting me now your path shines your path drops fatness you are a blessing to anyone you bring addition to any person anyone that you come into their life their lives get better the joseph anointing is upon you now continually consciously call yourself by a new name you are not what they called you you are not what they did to you. You are not how they defined you. You are not what they described you as. You are not what they, they said about you to your hearing. You are not consciously called yourself by a new name. Number seven. And this is as simple as it can get. Only Jesus can save. It's as simple. That's number seven. I don't know how best to describe it. Only Jesus can save. Many of us, we move from one pain to another, from one wrong person to another. We talk to everybody but Jesus. We talk to a friend. We talk to an aunt. We talk, we don't talk to, only Jesus can save. In his presence is the fullness of joy. And that leads me now to number eight. Always talk to God about how you feel. Always talk to God about how you feel. He has invited you to cast your cares and cast your worries upon him. To cast your fears on him. He wants to show you what real love, real care is. Let it become not just another religious term. Let it become a conviction where you say, Jesus is my lover. Where it becomes real to you. You've seen love through him. You've seen what true love is. That the kingdom is likened unto these. The man who had two sons and one went to a far country. Despite what he did, despite his mistakes, the kingdom is likened unto these. As the young man came back, the father was still waiting. This is what real love love is that no matter what you did that you can't be too dirty for God not to clean you you can't go too far for God not to pull you back you've got to live with the consciousness a consciousness that I want to be in a love walk with Jesus I don't just want to talk to him about money about a career about healing I want to experience what love is what love is Lord open my eyes again open my understanding to what real love is real love real love are you getting me at all a description of Jesus is not that he he loves people he is love he is love everyone that comes to jesus experience what true love is maybe for so long a time you've been close to the love of god you've been close you've been close what god sent me to do today is to ask you to open yourself to his love open yourself again to the love of god he will show you what real love and real care is he will love you without taking from you he will love you without abusing you he will love you without calling you names and when Jesus has created the standard for love, then you know what to expect from every other person. You know what is not right for you. You know what is not healthy for you. But if you've not experienced the love of Jesus, you'll be looking at men for the love of Jesus. Looking at people to give you what only God can give you. There is something called the love of God. And that's what we've been called to experience. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy Lord, and I will give you rest. There is someone I pray for today in the name of jesus and the creator from this encounter experience god's love like never before experience the love of god like never before let wholeness come upon you let wholeness come upon you let wholeness come upon you in the name of jesus stretch your two hands towards me 
Uh, this is beyond just a teaching service. There is something God is fixing now. Ancient foundational injuries. You've gone through things for days, for months, for years. It has affected everything about you. God brought you to this encounter, connected you to the encounter. So healing can come. I pray for someone under the sound of my voice. May the Lord touch you where you need it most. May Jehovah touch you where you need it most. Every era you are hurting. Every era you are dry. Every era you are empty. I decree the release of the hand of God now. The release of the hand of God now. The release of the hand of God now. May God lift you up where you are down. May God lift you up where you are down. In the name of Jesus. I decree the light of God shines upon your soul. Kali the light of God right now shines on your soul. Every dark area, every dark spot, every area depression has taken over. The light of God shines on your soul now. The light of God shines on your soul now. The light of God shines on your soul. In the name of Jesus. I decree that you are delivered from every internal anger. Every bottled pain. By the mercy of God, deliverance is released for you now. You are healed. You are healed. You are made whole. Internal anger, bottled pain. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. I rebuke the spirit of heaviness. I rebuke the spirit of depression. I rebuke the spirit of heaviness. I rebuke the spirit of depression. In the name of Jesus. From this day. Let a new you begin to manifest. A new you. A freer you. A whole you. A new you. A free you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. May the hand of God pick you up again. In the name of Jesus. May the hand of God dust you clean again. In the name of Jesus. Let a new you manifest. With new perspective. With a different focus. With alignment with God. In the name of Jesus. Right where you are. The hand of the Lord is upon you. Never again will you return to the vomit and the pain. Never again will you return to the vomit and the pain. The hand of the Lord is upon you. Wholeness. 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 In the name of Jesus. 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 Let your aim be the loudest. Give the Lord a mighty hand, everybody. decree this morning every health challenge that injury of the soul has cost your body every health challenge every struggle limitations in your health that an injury in the soul has cost you I command that head condition to dry up now by the power of the Holy Ghost dry up now dry up now dry up now and I decree you are healed now in the name of Jesus thank you father for answers to prayers in Jesus much less name we have prayed and God's people shout out a better amen give the Lord a good hand if you can